Subscribe and turn on notifications for more videos. The monarchy is one of the most famous and oldest government systems in history, which made famous by European nations throughout the course of millennium. With the king and queen ruling the land to guarantee the public safety, an excellent diplomatic policies, and being cheered by thousands to millions of people through parades and weddings, it's without a doubt why the monarchy is still thriving to this day with 44 nations still retain the concept as of 2019. But back in 1823, one man in the Philippines led a small mutiny in attempt to turn the archipelago into a European-style monarchy. This is the first and only emperor of the Philippines. In the beginning of the 19th century, Spain was facing heavy turmoil within her nation and its overseas colonies. In Europe, they were struggling to liberate their country from Napoleon's forces in the Napoleonic Wars, and in Latin America, nationalistic revolts sprang out around the region in hopes to secede from their colonizers. But our story is focused around a Creole man who fought in these two wars. His name is Andres Novales, who was born in Manila in the year 1800. His father is a Spanish army captain, and his mother belongs to to a rich family. The young Novales has ambitions to be like his father. At the age of 9, he was a candidate into the Spanish army and later at 14, he graduated as a lieutenant. Upon enlistment in the army, he requested to his commander to send him to fight in the Peninsula War for Spain. The commander told the young lieutenant if he allows him to deploy to Europe, he'll be stripped all of his ranks. Despite the risk, Novales pushed forward his endeavors and volunteered in the Spanish army to free the nation against the French. Once the war concluded in 1814, he was deployed to South America to crush the Latin American revolutionaries. During this time, he saw the pride of nationalism from revolutionary leaders like Simon Bolivar and José de San Martín, who was determined to gain freedom from colonial rule. He also saw Spain's failures to retain their former colonies. After fighting two wars, he finally returned to Manila where he was awarded to the ranks of captain. Because of the impact of the revolution in South America, Novales questioned Spain's feudal practices and the racial discrimination of minorities within the territories. Due to the emergence of radical reforms on human rights and it being accepted in both Europe and the colonies, Novales began supporting Luis Rodriguez Valera's Sons of the Century movement. The group denounced Spanish policies in the island as they see them as outdated and advocated for social reforms, remove fires from Catholic influence, and preach on bringing science and arts to the people. Though it took time for authorities to turn back on the mixed race people. Due to their defeat in the South American Revolutionary War and worried that they will meet the same fate with the Philippines, the Spanish government ordered to remove all Creoles and other mixed race citizens from military ranks, replacing them with peninsular soldiers. The rest of the mixed race, including Navales, were sent to banish in the Muslim-ruled Mindanao region on June 2, 1823, but the ship was prevented to depart due to a typhoon in the area. Novales saw this opportunity to start his own revolution convincing many disgruntled ex-officers including Lieutenant Ruiz and Sergeant Mateo to join his cause, which they all accepted, and started recruiting ex-soldiers mostly made up of Latinos and managed to amass around 800 men. They initiate plans to capture key buildings in Manila without alerting the Spanish authorities. Interestingly, prior to the march on the city, Novales' men started referring their leader as Emperor of the Philippines, and once they reached the city on the early morning of June 3rd, the locals were awakened with shouts of Viva el Imperador Novales and Viva la Independencia throughout city streets. The locals then began waving flags to the resistance while others joined the soldiers' chants in support of the supposed Philippine Emperor, signaling their support for the rebellion. The rebels made their move, taking control of the Manila City Hall and the city's cathedral. Spanish officials was eventually captured and executed including the former Governor General Mariano Fernandez de Fulgueras and the commandant of the Palacio del Gobernador. At 6 a.m. Novales' men headed straight to Intramuros, while Filipinos around them continued cheering the actions of the revolutionaries. When they finally reached the fortress, the emperor tried to gain confidence to his brother, Mariano Novales, who commands his unit to protect the fort, to defect on his side, saying, quote, This is my moment, dear brother, to liberate our country from the hands of oppressors. I'm already master of the city and of the palace, and all of the constituted authorities. I therefore exonerate you to join me in proclaiming independence in the fort you command, and to prepare to defend the scared cause like a true citizen. Mariano rejected his brother's offer, and his guards ordered to fire cannons on the rebel force.
forces. Because of the cannon fire, they were unable to enter the fort while losing supplies in the process. And with a bit of sympathy to his only family member, Mariano sent his brother and his men supplies. However, this short reunion didn't last long, as the Governor General Juan Antonio Martinez, who have just arrived from Pampanga along with his forces, has retaken the capital buildings and arrested Novales for treason. He was sent to execution along with his men, but in a valiant of hope, he pleaded the Governor General not to execute Ruiz and 21 sergeants and wanted him to take their places instead, blaming himself for his arrogant acts as the reason for his mutiny, but his appeal was ignored. His final words, quote, Let my death and that of my companions be an example to you. We die innocent for having attempted to give you freedom. He never finished his last sentence, as the governor feared that it will spark another rebellion. Ever since the event took place two centuries ago, many historians have theorized several factors why the revolt failed. Some claim that Mexico, who supposedly sent Novales to overthrow Spanish rule in the island, failed to supply the mutiny, since the country gained their independence from Spain two years prior and didn't want to take the risk of provoking another war with the Spanish Empire, while others believe that it boiled down to the lack of leadership and strategic plans within the rebel forces due to many leaders weren't really interested of an independent Philippines and only care for fighting the rights of the peasants and workers. Although we will never get the answer why the self-proclaimed emperor was unsuccessful carving out a Philippine monarchy, its legacy was never forgotten, as Dr. Jose Rizal was inspired by the rebellion and he used the event as a metaphor in his book El Filibusterismo, which influenced Filipinos to revolt against the Spanish in 1896. Thank you guys for watching this video and yes, uh, thank god I'm back uh, making these videos uh, it's been like two months since uh, I've uploaded the last video because my PC was broken you all know that uh, you saw the video uh, a month ago so uh, yeah I'm really happy that I'm back and yeah thank you guys uh, for watching be sure to like subscribe to this channel uh, turn on notifications and don't forget to follow me on Twitter Facebook and Twitch and don't forget to check these videos that are popping up right now on the screen and yeah thank you guys for watching uh, stay safe, uh, hope you guys uh, uh, wet are well and are in quarantine right now in your homes. So yeah, thank you guys, goodbye, stay safe.